What's going on, my friends? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Right now, Bitcoin's sitting at $38,900. We're up about 4%. What I want to do is bring you Bitcoin on the three-day time frame, and then we're going to work our way in, and we're going to do the same for Ethereum and Litecoin. So if you guys get some from these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we're going to dig into this. Basically, what I'm going to show you today is the bullish side that we have going for Bitcoin and the bearish things that we have going for Bitcoin. And then I want you to let me know down low, do you believe that we are in the middle of a bull market? Do you believe the bull market is done? Do you believe the top's in? When we did our poll in my community channel, the overwhelming amount of people were saying that they believe we are still in a bull market right now. So I would love your opinion down low, and we'll dig into this. <clears throat> so first of all, guys, we're going to start with the bullish things for us. On the three-day time frame, we are still trading up above this white trend line. This is very important. It has three touches, and these touches are spaced far apart. And that can actually show some strength if you're able to continue to hold that after having these big, these big gaps. And what you're seeing is that we've basically had these tweezer bottoms right off this trend line here. This was a, a hammer candle. has a little bit long, longer wick on the top than what I would like to see there, but still a hammer candle here. And what we're trying to do is keep higher lows coming in. So here was our lows, higher lows, and we're going to see if we can go up and make a higher high. So the bullish thing is we have those tweezer bottoms, really long wicks here. A lot of bulls were jumping in in this area, and we're still trading up above this trend line. And our relative strength is at 39 right now, so we're not in overbought conditions when we're looking at this here. We have plenty of room to make a nice move if we can get through $40,000 as resistance. That's going to be a tough overhead resistance area. And then the next area I'm going to really look up to is around the $47,000 to $50,000 range. So if we are able to break through 40 here, this yellow or orange line, right here is going to be the next overhead resistance that I think we could could potentially slow down a little bit because all this right up here is going to be overhead resistance as well as we try to work our way back up through 40,000, 47,000, 50,000 up to around that 58,000, 60,000 and then the 65,000. And guys, this is how you have to look at it. When you break through a resistance, you need to turn it into support <clears throat> and vice versa. Okay, so it's really important here that we hold this area. If we do have a trend line break out of here, that's going to show a, a negative sign for us. So we need to be prepared for that as well. But right now, we're still trying to hold. We need increased volume. That's what's going to be important for us. Now, thing I want to point out here on the EMAs now. We are trading, and these are some of the bearish things. We're trading below in 20. You can see almost this entire bull market where we are up to that 64,000. We were trading up above this 20 EMA on the three-day time frame. Also, the 50, we are now trading below that. We're trying to find support off the 100 right here in orange. And then the 200 would be down around 26,000. That would be a potential area. If we did break down through here, see if we could bounce off that, back test this trend line here and see if we get back up in it or if we have another leg to the downside. So this is a sticky spot here, guys. As we take a look at this, we have a lot of bullish things going for us. We have a lot of bearish things going for us, a lot of mixed signals. If we get into the technicals, on the one-day time frame, we have an 11 sell, a 10 neutral, and a 5 buy. Oscillators, 1 sell, 9 neutral, and a 1 buy. On the one-week time frame, we're looking at an 8 sell, 9 neutral, and a 9 buy. So a lot of mixed signals that are taking place right now in this space. If we get into the one-day time frame, we're just going to work our way down for Bitcoin. And this will show it a little bit better, but we are still trading below this 200 EMA, guys. And I don't like that because we're getting squeezed now between this trend line and this 200 EMA in white. And you can see that the 20 is actually crossed down through the 200. So we have a lot of overhead resistance here, marking this $40,000. We have the 200 EMA here. We got the 20. We got the 50 overhead. The 50 is crossing down through the 100. So we have a lot of things going against us, and we have to poke through or, or bust through this overhead resistance on heavier volume. And right now we haven't had the heaviest volume as we're moving up here. So this is a tough overhead spot. We're going to need the bulls to really step in in this area if we want to continue it to the upside here on the one day time frame. In terms of support, I would look for us to hold about $34,000. It's going to be a key area for us. I do like where the relative strength is at at 43. You can see we're gaining a little bit of strength there. And I believe we are getting a MACD cross as well. If we take a look at that, we have had a MACD cross. Okay, so we just need that buying pressure, but we still have a lot of work to do, guys. You know, and that's the thing. So many people go, oh, I know for sure that it's uh, bullish or bearish. Guys, this changes by the day. There's so much manipulation, and the whales are the ones who are going to drive this market. And what we have to do is basically follow their coattails and try to get as much of the move as we can, the meat of the move, the percentage gains in the move. That's what we're looking for. 
okay? So when anyone says they know for sure they don't have a crystal ball and unless they're a whale, and if I go to glass node here, I want to point out a couple things. The whale wallets, number of whale wallets, there's 1,928. So most likely none of us are a whale, okay? Got to take a look at that. But you can see on the on-chain activity, exchange inflow volume, about flat right now, exchange deposits, minus 2.52%, exchange outflow volume, over 15%. So that's good when you start seeing that outflow back into some of the wallets where they're holding for the longer term. Exchange withdrawals, we're looking at 1.63%, and then the exchange balance down 0.28%. And there's quite a few things I like to look at here, guys, the top and bottom indicators as well. I like the reserve risk is a good one. And if you like me showing you this glass node stuff, guys, let me know. So what this shows is basically when you get up into the red, that's great profit taking. And this is the lifespan of Bitcoin, what you're seeing right here. And then when you're in the green, those are great buying opportunities. And what you can see is on this last cycle here, we did not get up into the red. So either, guys, this is the, the halfway intermission here, and we're trying to find a bottom, and we're going to have another huge extension to the upside and potentially get into that red, or these are diminishing cycles that are taking place here, and we just did not get up into the red this time. All right, so when we went from 3,000 to 14,000 here, we didn't get up to the red. Then we had that huge sell-off all the way back down into the green. That big capitulation in March went all the way back down. So, you know, in 2017, we got up into that area. The past cycles, the double bubble, we got up in that area. On this one, we did not. And that is the Bitcoin reserve risk. So that's something I like to take a look at here. A couple other of my favorites for top and bottom indicators while I have you here. Let's see. So we'll do the net unrealized profit and loss. So for that one, where we're at right now, and you might be able to see a little bit better in white here, just the colors. So right now where we're at, we made it up into the green, and that was like the belief phase. And then blue typically marks euphoria. We did not hit that as well this time. Okay, so either diminishing cycles like we talked about, you see the higher blue up here, and it's just moving down. Or we did not get up into that, and we are still waiting for one more big move to the upside or one more massive leg to the upside to see if we can challenge that 65,000 and get up a little bit higher. But what you see is that on this backside now, we are into the yellow. And what that is is anxiety. And obviously this is marking pretty well because a lot of people are anxious in this space that we're in right now or this moment in Bitcoin's history that we're in right now. A lot of people are anxious. So we're going to see if we can get back up and climb up a little bit higher again into that belief stage if we do get a nice move to the upside out of here. But typically when you see the red, that's capitulation. Those are great buying opportunities. And when you see that blue tip up here, just like that, that marks tops. And then most likely you're going to get a massive sell-off. Okay, and we did not see it this time. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that as well. And we're just going to go through this stuff, guys, you know, once a week or whatever. I want to try to give you the best information that I can. So for Bitcoin, we'll go in a little bit tighter here, and then we're going to move on to Ethereum. And then Bitcoin on the 12 hour, what you can see right here still, guys, low, higher, low, higher, low, trying to hold that here. So right now we're trying to get a higher high. If we can't get that, a little bit more of an equilibrium pattern we're going to have to see. But still, you know, a lot of stuff pressing down upon us, the 50, the 100, and the 200 trying to get up above the 20 on the 12 hour time frame here. So definitely keep an eye on that, guys. That's Bitcoin. You let me know if we're going to continue on here. And this is just... You know a middle of the market collapse we basically had or if this is the start of the bear market officially and we better you know have some strategy towards that i'd love to hear your guys's opinion all right so let's get into ethereum east at 2833 we are now getting a macd cross Right there, you can see the histogram ticking green for Ethereum. This is on the one-day time frame, relative strength, setting higher lows. And we're at 50 right now, so plenty of room. We're running into overhead resistance right now. What this almost looks like is kind of an ascending triangle type deal. You can see the higher lows coming in, this flat top of resistance. If we can break through that, I would look for resistance around $3,400 would be a spot we could look up to. And then it would be up around that previous high of 4164 based off the candles.
So Ethereum has been looking stronger than what Bitcoin has. If we take a look at the EMAs, you can see we're still trading up above the 200, the 100. We're trying to close back up above the 20 and the 50. So that's entirely different than what's going on with Bitcoin right now. So definitely stronger with Ethereum. And if we can get a nice pop out of here, there's a decent little gap here because of how far we fell to the downside. But we're not out of the woods yet, guys. We need that buying pressure at this area or we're going to bounce back down. And just continue in that ascending triangle until obviously we get a break to the upside or the downside. It's typically a more bullish pattern, but we always can break to the downside out of that about 30% of the time. Okay, so keep an eye on that. If we get into the technicals for Ethereum, you can see they're better than Bitcoin. Three cell, nine neutral, and a 14 buy. Oscillators, one cell, eight neutral, and a two buy. Moving averages, two cell, one neutral, and a 12 buy. So just really look for us. I would say to hold get in just a little bit tighter here on the 12 hour time frame i want to see us continue to hold about 2300 dollars would be an area up to around 2400 dollars would be the support areas we don't want to start breaking to the downside out of this so we need to be aware of that all right guys so that's ethereum if you're here for that let me know down low just say eth and also let me know what you think for eth are we going to go back up and challenge that 42 4300 area would love your take down low <clears throat> and then we're going to get into litecoin Okay, Litecoin about ready to have a MACD cross on the one-day time frame relative strength. We're sitting at 43 right now, fighting with this 200 EMA. If we're taking a look at price action here, you can see we need a daily candle close up above this 200 EMA in white, and that's going to be at $188. If we get up above that, we're going to have to challenge this 20, 100, and 50 EMA pressing down upon us now. And that's going to correlate with overhead resistance at $200, that round psychological number right in here. <clears throat> but for Litecoin, what we're looking for, as if we get our drawing tool out here, you can see here, right? Trying to keep those higher lows coming in. All right, we want to keep that going till we eventually can break out through the top of this. And then another thing I like to do is always draw the trend lines too. So you can draw this trend line. And if we start having a trend line break, then most likely we're going to be going down to some lower levels. I would look for us to hold about 162, and then it'd be down to around that 142. All right. And what we're going to do with Litecoin as well, I wanted to get into the three day and the one week, kind of work our way back just a little bit, a little bit longer term view for Litecoin. So on the three day time frame, massive hammer candle here, huge wick on heavier volume. So that definitely could be a bottoming candle right there. And it also came off that 200 EMA. So very powerful there. If we can keep this moving and get our buying pressure continuously coming in histogram, trying to start to roll over here to the white a little bit. If we get to the one week, basically had almost like a dark cloud cover right up in here. Very bearish candle, long day candle to the downside there. And this is on the week time frame. Basically what we're trying to set here is almost like a harami pattern or harami pattern. And it's not the strong. So you always want to look for that confirmation. Okay, so we, same deal. We need heavy volume in this area relative strengths at 50, trying to get back up above this 20 EMA, which we had held since about October 19th, 2020. Okay, so that's important, guys. These things are very important. You can see this Harami pattern is basically coming in off this 50. So when people say moving averages don't matter, I would definitely disagree with that. But for Litecoin, major resistance areas we are going to look at on the one week 224, and then it's going to be up to around, I would say, $400 right in that area. On the week, we did have a downside cross on the MACD. So we've actually looked a little bit stronger in the shorter term for Litecoin in terms of that, in terms of the MACD there. If we get into the technicals, on the one day, we have a 10 cell, a 10 neutral, and a 6 buy. Oscillators, 1 cell, 9 neutral, and a 1 buy. Moving average is 9 cell, 1 neutral, and a 5 buy. If we get out to the one week, looking stronger, a little bit longer there. 6 cell, 9 neutral, and 11 buy. Moving average is 5 cell, 1 neutral, and a 9 buy. So really watch these support and resistance areas, guys. That's what's going to tell you the most. So just want to put this out there. If you get something from it, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. God bless each and every one of you. Take care, my friends.